Hey friends, welcome back to another video. Today, I wanted to give you a behind the scenes look at how I made my first ever documentary. And specifically, I wanted to talk a little bit about the planning and the pre-production that went into it. So for today's video, I'm gonna be using my documentary, My Life at 19, as an example. So major spoilers ahead, and if you haven't seen that documentary, maybe go ahead and pause this video, go and watch that video, and then come back and keep watching this video. Make sure you come back, Dave. I see you, Dave. Anyway, link to the documentary up here in the description and in the end cards of this video. If you haven't seen it already, give it a watch. So when I was planning this documentary, I used what's called a pitch deck. And a pitch deck is basically just a presentation which outlines the storyline and also the visual style of the film. So what I wanted to do today was sort of just walk you through my pitch deck. We'll talk about what I included, why I included it, and how it helped me to get a better idea of the film. So uh, yeah, let's get started. What are we waiting for? Or maybe we're waiting for Dave. Is Dave back yet? Okay, Dave's back, we're all good. All right, let's go. So the first thing I did was come up with a concept. I've seen this called the director's statement before. And for this film, my idea was essentially that I just wanted to give insight into what my life is like. So I knew that I would be the main character and I knew that the main events of the storyline would be the people, the places, the things, the activities that are important to me. And also a little bit of what the world is like at the time of me being 19. So next up, I wanted to think about the tone of the film, like how the audience is gonna be feeling when they're watching it. And in this case, I wanted to go for something that was a bit more peaceful and reflective. So what I did was I found some inspiration clips. So I jumped on YouTube, I jumped on the internet. By the way, this is just a really fun way of making binge watching YouTube videos sound productive. So definitely do this. Anyway, what I was doing was I was looking for films and creators that have a similar tone to what I was after. So I watched a lot of Nathaniel Drew, The Cottage Fairy, Danny Jevritz. By the way, links to all of them in the description down below. They're great. Go ahead and give them a watch. And as I'm watching, I'm sort of taking screenshots of shots that I like. I'm noting down the genre of music that they're using, the pace of the edit, just anything I can sort of steal that I liked from the, uh, the films that they had there. And you'll notice that this page inside the pitch deck is called Visual Style. And it's basically just an outline of how I'm gonna use cinematography elements like lighting, composition, and movement. So all I'm really doing is thinking about, okay, what are the cinematography elements that I liked from my inspiration clips? And then how am I gonna use those for my purposes and my own film? Here's a little bonus tip, you're welcome. I found it super overwhelming to try and think about the cinematography of every individual shot. I found it much easier to create rules that can just be applied to the entire scene or even the entire film and operate within those when I'm setting up my shots. So for example, instead of saying, okay, scene three, shot two is gonna be on a tripod, it's gonna have a foreground tree and it's gonna be side lit at golden hour. Instead of saying those specific things for every single shot, I can just create some rules, like the camera will be on a tripod as much as possible. The lighting will be golden hour, side lit and natural as much as possible. And I'm gonna use foreground elements to create depth as much as possible. And now I've got these rules that I can apply to every shot. So instead of being overwhelmed, trying to approach every individual shot with its own unique spin on how the cinematography is going to tell the story, I can just use these overarching rules to direct the tone of the film with the cinematography. And I can apply those to shots even when I didn't plan them. So it makes it super adaptable as well. If I decide, if I get to location and I'm like, oh, I really want to take this shot, but I didn't plan for it. I don't have to sit down and think about the cinematography of it. I can just set it up and apply the rules that I created. So it makes it super flexible and way less overwhelming. So I hope that helps you as well. And that's what this visual style page is really just outlining. It's just outlining those rules. All right, next up is the lookbook. And the lookbook is essentially just a mood board of all of those inspiration screenshots that I found earlier, which helps me to convey the visual style and get a really good sense of the coherent overall style. And it's good to have these things around for reference. They can be helpful if you get stuck when you're out shooting. If you're like, oh, I remember there was a cool shot from Nathaniel Drew's video. If only I remembered how he'd set up that composition, you can just go back to your lookbook, find the reference, and there you go. So if you get stuck on set, it's super helpful. Also helpful when you're color grading, if you want to match a similar color grade or get a vibe, it can be great to bring those images in, it might help you out. Now I've got a couple pages on the script, which is actually more of a screenplay because it sort of shows the actions, not so much the literal dialogue. And this is super flexible, by the way, as well. I definitely changed what this screenplay looks like in the edit. I had to cut a couple scenes that just weren't working for the film. I had this one scene where I was playing guitar. It didn't work with the film, so I had to cut it out. So this is definitely open to flexibility and adaptation as you move through the process. Anyway, the first page that I have here is really just an overview of the entire film. And then the subsequent pages are overviews of each little sort of scene or couple scenes. So that helps me to get a shot list. 
So I come back to this when I'm planning my shot list and also helps me to make the rough cut of the film so that I can get just the basic edit down. Now, when I was thinking about the actual dialogue lines, what I did was I actually opened up a note on my computer. And I just jotted down some thoughts of what I wanted to say in my voiceover. Now, this is helpful because I'm the main character. I know what I'm gonna say, but if you're shooting someone else, if someone else is your main character, what it might be good to do is to think about how they might answer the interview questions that you have prepared. Always good to prepare your interview questions. Think about how they might answer it and then you can sort of figure out maybe where the gist of the film might go based on that. So technically that's the end of my pitch deck, but I actually did a couple more things to plan the film. I actually found all of the music for the film before I even started shooting. So what I did was I just went over to my music licensing platform. In this case, it's the fine folks at Epidemic Sound, uh, not sponsored by the way. Although if someone from Epidemic Sound did want to sponsor me, my email is in the description down below. I would love to hear from you. Anyway, what I did was I just found some music that fit the same tone as my inspiration films. I was thinking about the genre and the musical orchestration of them and sort of finding tracks that were similar and matched that same tone. In this case, it was more of that sort of slow piano and ambient tracks. I saved them all into a playlist and that way when editing time comes around, it's as simple as downloading the playlist and you're off to the races. So the last thing I did was to make a shot list. So what I did was I just listened to my music tracks, I looked at my reference images and I read through the script and I just tried to visualize how the film was gonna look. And I noted down shots that came into my head. Now I can actually get quite specific with this because I'm the main character and I have control over all the actions that are going on inside the film. But if you can't get shot specific, like if you're shooting a scene or a person that you don't have control over, which is actually what normal documentary filmmaking is like, I would suggest that you focus on the actions and the objects involved in the scene. So for example, if I knew I was doing a scene of someone painting, I would think about, okay, what are the objects, the tools, the materials that they're using? And then what are the actions that they're doing? Like what are the actual paint strokes they're making? What location are they in? How do they feel whilst they're painting? So I'm just trying to tell a full story with all these different elements. And I'll be noting down as my shot list, the actual actions and objects and elements that are involved in the scene, not the literal shot setups. Well, there you have it, folks. That is my six step process to planning a documentary film. I take planning pretty seriously. I reckon the more that you plan, the less stress you have when you're actually shooting and the more cohesive your final product ends up being. So I hope you got some value from seeing my process. If you have things that you do when you're planning a documentary and I didn't mention them, please let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to learn from you. I'm always looking to improve my own process. And whilst you are down there, like the video, subscribe to the channel, make sure you hit the notification bell. That way you don't miss out on future documentaries. There's plenty more coming in the future. If you wanted to check out my documentary, My Life at 19, it's in the description linked down there and also in the end cards of the video. End cards that way, this way, I don't know. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. And I look forward to seeing you next week, Wednesday, where we may or may not blow up an elephant with visual effects. See you then. And Dave, thanks for watching. Will this little fly thing get out of my video? Please, will you get out? I actually got it. <laughs> I'm back.